Hey everyone, this is Virdulet here, and today we have the first LBA battle of the week. Now, I decided to quit my team just to cover these awesome battles, since a lot of people in the LBA league, unlike other leagues, they don't have a YouTube channel, or they're not required to have a YouTube channel, so we miss a lot of awesome battles, and decided to start covering them, uh, since this is uh, very important. Now, this matchup is, is between Portland Timbers and Cubic City Vertex. Now, the Portland Timbers... They have a record of 4 and 1. They're, all, they're the Season 1 champion and the creators of the league. And the Cubic City Veritics, they have a record of 2 wins and 3 losses. So it's a pretty big match for Matt or Cubic City Veritics. And we need and he needs to plan and pull through. He likes to use the sun. We know that much of him. And, <coughs> and yeah, uh, what else? Yeah, if you're in the LBA league, uh, please don't forget to... Uh, Stay until until the end of the video because there's an announcement and you need to hear it if you are in the LBA league. You need to hear it or you will be kicked from the league. Okay, just kidding. I'm not even an admin. But yeah, so you need to stay until the end uh, so that I will tell you what is the announcement. Okay, so we'll see the battle here. Um, it will start now. So Matt or the Cubic City Vertex, the lead off with their nine tails, which puts a lot of pressure on Teller's team. Honestly, it's a good, it's a good Pokemon. Um, uh, I mean against Tyler's team. So Tyler reads off with his Sharpedo and Tyler decides to go for the Protect. Now depending on this Ninetales spread it could be in, in Matt's advantage or against him. Tyler goes for Protect and Matt pulls off an awesome substitute so he did predict this lead and which is not something easy to predict like who would predict a Sharpedo lead but he does pull off a substitute get the substitute as he will fire off a potential solar beam which will destroy the Sharpedo but Matt does not go for the solar beam he goes for hidden power something I would assume fighting since Tyler has a mill tank with Sepsipper and uh, thick fat so either of them would put nine tail and nine tails in a pickle which move to go to, to go or use so hidden power fighting is uh, is a good option and he also has the Zorok so he doesn't need to over predict a lot but Hidden Power Fighting does not get the kill, but now he goes into Mustaine. The Gyarados intimidates the Sharpedo, takes the crunch like a boss, and then Sharpedo goes down to the Life Orb. So the score right now is 6-5 uh, in favor of uh, Cubic City Vertex. So Sharpedo goes down a huge threat out of the way, uh, and then Tyler goes into his Arch, uh, whatever, the Galvantula. I'm sure these are names from Smite. So he goes into his Galvantula. As a predicted sticky webs, he goes into his cryogonal, or Matt goes into his cryogonal, which will do, uh, which can rapid spin and take any hit. But Tyler decides to get momentum. Clever play on his part by going for Volt Switch, and then going into his Brillum instead of sending up the sticky webs. So Brillum is here, and Brillum has um, a Brillum can just mock punch and destroy this thing. Mustang comes in because Mustang can take take mock punches like a boss with intimidate. But Tyler goes for Spar. Great play on his part. Um, if this thing would, was defensive, I don't think it, um, I don't think Spar would have been uh, like he could have sparred later, but he can't risk it. He doesn't know which Pokemon will come in, so he just goes for Spar, puts the Scare just to sleep, tries his luck with Bullet Seed just to see the spread. Even though we saw that Crunch uh, didn't do much, and he only gets two hits, which is un really unfortunate for him. Uh, the Scare is still asleep, so um, pretty sure that Tyler needs to switch out now, or Gyarados will wake up eventually. So Teller switches out and goes into his uh, Galvantula again. As Matt here will wake up and pull off a substitute just because on the next turn he wants to be able to dodge the uh, dodge the spore. So uh, he, he he pulls off a substitute and then Tyler goes for a thunder, breaking the sub obviously. As Matt will go and use. Um, I'm not sure what he'll use here. Oh, he'll use Thunder Wave. I don't know why he's Thunder Wave. Yeah, he predicted a Volt Switch probably. So he predicted a Volt Switch, uh, just a Thunder Wave something coming in, but <coughs> Galvantel does stay in and now he goes for Volt Switch. Obviously, will KO since it's four times super effective. This Gyarados goes down and now this car I think is 5 5 again. So Volt Switch, Galvantula, get out of here, and then sending out his Agron, or actually, no, sending out his Landris T. Okay. And then um, Matt sends out his Cryogonal. Now Lander's T is Scarf and Cryogonal has pitiful uh, physical defense so an Earthquake or Knockoff would definitely KO. But Matt does pack Choice Scarf Cryogonal which is able to outspeed the Choice Scarf Landers and hit him with an Ice Beam. Uh, I think this may be not the best play on Tyler's part. He could have scouted with Aggron since 
Unless this thing has a hidden power fighting, Agron can eat that up so easily. <coughs> so it goes into his uh, his Heatran. Uh, with the air balloon, Agron really can't touch this thing until it pops the balloon. And also, we can see that Matt is really prepared for sticky webs since everything so far is either floating or uh, or, or can rapid spin like cryogonal or the Ninetales. Okay, just fucked up. So yeah, just Gyarados and this thing, they both they were both floating. Or at least there's there's a solar power boost. So Teller does set up the rock as Matt goes for flame charge. So he was intending to sweep, but just Dragon Tail is enough to pop the balloon and kick him out of there. Uh, very good play. And then even though I think Agron would have taken uh, Lava Plume or Flamethrower uh, pretty damn well. So Matt is not is out as, into his Mega Mid-Town, which, su which sucks a lot for Teller. I think going into uh, going into what do you call it? Yeah, going into Shift Tree would have been a great switch out for Tyler. But unfortunately, this thing comes. Um, so yeah, uh, goes for Drain Punch. Uh, I don't know why he is not packing the High Jump Kick, but I guess in the LBA League or in, in general in this format, when you know there is a Medicham, there is always a Protect user to make him fall on his head. So Drain Punch is a clever move here. As he goes for Drain Punch, KOing this thing after uh, Agron landing off a Heavy Slam. Good job on Agron taking the Drain Punch from a pure power base 100 uh, attack. So Taylor goes into his into his Galvantula. No rocks, so we assume that the Sash is intact. And <coughs> he will probably uh, go for Volt Switch now. Yeah, he does go for Volt Switch. Um, maybe firing off a Thunder here would have been better, but I'm not sure. Because Heatran could take that and Tyler would lose momentum. So it's a 50-50, but I think had he fired off Thunder, this thing would have been dead. So Tyler goes into his Breloom, fire off a Mach Punch, not gonna overpredict this time and get a Beam to the face. Uh, taking this thing out, and now we s we will see the mid champ, which purely destroys this Breloom. Fake outs and headbutt goodbye. Mach Punch is not gonna kill since it's resisted. So he goes for Mach Punch, but Tyler does pack the Protect, which which protects him from the fake out. That's a very very good play on Tyler's part, or a very good preparation on Tyler's part. So he does dodge the fake out, gets a nice punch to the face, lives with one HP, and then goes for the spar, uh, just to be safe. Uh, no idea what uh, what will happen with uh, no idea what will he, he will switch into. So even if he switches into Shift Three, Mach Punch will just pop into the next universe. So he goes for Bullet Seed here and get rid of the Mega Mega Cham. So bye bye Mega Mega Cham. Um, Brolo managed to beat you. And so one one huge threat is out of the way. And now Nine Tails comes in and Nine Tails steps on the Stealth Rocks. Mach Punch could KO depending on this Nine Tails spread. So if, if Mach Punch KOs, something else might die because Heatran and Shiftry are both weak to Mach Punch. So we'll see if this KOs or not. And Nine Tails managed to live with like what? Like one HP or something? <laughs> what is that? So it does live with that, uh, like one HP. And KO's back with a Fire Blast, which is risky. Could have missed. He should have gone for Hidden Power. But, oh well, uh, Alakazam could have came in safely. So Tyler goes for Dazzling Gleam, doesn't want to fuck around with Psychic and Shift Trees coming in on that. So Ninetales does go down, and now we, s we see this Shift Tree with a potential Fake Out. So we'll see here. Uh, Shift Tree goes Fake Out, but Tyler again pulls off a Protect with a Focus Sash. This is insane. Like, you don't see that every day. This is so awesome. He's really prepared for the uh, Fake Out. So he goes for Thief, unfortunately he doesn't steal the Focus Sash because first of all he does have an item and I think Focus Sash activates first anyways, I think, I'm not sure, since it activates with Knock Up. So it doesn't gleam enough to take the Shifter out with its pitiful defenses. So Shifter does go down, we're going to see the Heatran here with the Flame Charge, so this is very very dangerous. Uh, Tyler does not pack the Focus Blast or at least uh, he doesn't want to miss it, so he just goes for Psy Shock, getting off enough damage so that the Galvantula could might KO the Thunder. So he goes for Flame Charge, gets the speed boost, which will be important in outspeeding the Galvantula. Now we don't know if Galvantula is Focus Sash, again a third Focus Sasher, or maybe a different item. Uh, maybe Choice Scarf for Specs. No, actually we did see him change moves, so we don't know here. Now, Heatran goes for Flamethrower, will it get the KO? Galvantula does live, these are the last two Pokemon by the way. Galvantula lives with 1 HP, and then Galvantula retaliates with a Thunder. This should KO or should paralyze, otherwise Tyler is going to lose. And it doesn't paralyze or KO, and Matt retaliates with his Flame Charger Keytran, um, and goes for Flamethrower and manages to beat uh, Tyler. So this is a very good battle, well played on both of them. Um, yeah, it was really, really an awesome battle to watch, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the battle of the week. Now. 
<laughs> every week I'll, I'll post battles of the week. This is the announcement for the people in the LBA League. Every every week I'll post battle of the week, so I'll be expecting submissions for it for week seven. Don't forget to send those. I will not watch battles because there are 32 people in the league, and it's impossible for me to watch every single battle. So if you think your battle qualifies, just send to me the code. And the other important thing is that I asked you guys to give me like top 10 plays and top 10 sets and right now I changed my mind I don't want those I just want top 10 plays I don't care about the set that they use I don't want a weird set I just want top 10 plays like a play that's insane uh, that it got you back in the match from week 1 to week 7 okay from week 1 to week 7 I want top 10 plays after that the week after it I will make a I'll make top 10 uh, best or we just set in the LBA but for now I want top 10 plays like only plays I don't care about the set I don't care uh, if the set is very unique this will be for the week after for now I want top 10 plays so hopefully you guys enjoyed see you guys next time and yeah send me stuff and subscribe if you're not in the league